Hi, I'm Carly Johnston, I'm from ANU. Um, I gave a plenary yesterday about transitioning from being a clinician to an academic through being um, creating a new version of myself and during that talk I had to really be very vulnerable in an environment that I, of my peers that I actually had never met before and through that we've really kept those conversations going about the benefits of being vulnerable and the importance of showing vulnerability to our students and to our peers and to each other and taking care of each other um, and showing courage in what we do and that's been a really wonderful part of this conference for me. Hi, so I'm Graeme Horton, I'm from the University of Newcastle and I've had a great Anzapy conference. Uh, this year it's been just such a melting pot of ideas, uh, colleagues being really generous in their sharing of expertise uh, and really animated discussions at the, at the workshop we presented prior to the conference and in all the Pearl sessions since then. Um, you know, we're all in this together in, in medical education and uh, Ansby Conference this year has again been a great, great opportunity to learn from other people in a beautiful setting with fantastic food and a great, you know, night of fun and dancing last night. So yeah, what more can I say? Uh, so I'm Bernie Bissett from the University of Canberra and I was very happy to do a plenary presentation here at Anzapy this week uh, where we talked about how we've used masked simulation in our curriculum and tried to engage with students a little bit more and connect with real, more realistic older adults to better prepare them for the real world. I'm Avril from um, Auckland in New Zealand and I have absolutely loved coming to Anzapay this year. It's been an amazingly positive conference across all the dimensions. The conversations have just been amazing. The feedback from participants has been amazing. People have loved the poster sessions. All the plenaries and large sessions have been great. Opportunities to ask questions. Um, and I know lots of colleagues have gone away with lots of new ideas and wanting to implement lots of them into their workplace. Um, mainly around some of the work that we've been doing with speech language therapy and dealing with Parkinson's patients, so lots of people coming up around that and thinking that just makes such sense. If people can't swallow their medicines, how nurse can we instruct them on keeping safe and managing their symptom control? But there have been lots of others that go across um, all the dimensions, particularly in nursing, dietetics, physio um, and medicine in, in general as well, of course, naturally, because that's actually where I work. So being able to have those conversations about improving prescribing performance and taking the work that happens in university, as this is mainly a lot of participants are from universities, and waving the flag to be able to lift some of those things and apply them in the practice setting and creating an environment, work-based learning environment, where people can actually enact that. Hi, I'm Frank uh, Donnelly and I'm from the Faculty of Health and Medical Sciences at University of Adelaide. Uh, I've just come back from uh, ANSPE. Uh, wonderful conference, um, particularly for, for me there was uh, two things that I really, really enjoyed. The first one was um, people were talking about complexity uh, and I'm, a, I'm an advocate for complexity theory uh, so there was a whole session devoted to that and the, th the nice thing about that is it's, uh, it's this recognition that what we're trying to do in terms of interprofessional learning, improving health outcomes is, is tough work uh, and um, it's okay to think about it in a complex way so that was, the, that was a really nice uh, out, outcome for me. The other thing was um, talking to people about uh, the use of um, technology. So we've been using uh, 360 video uh, to create uh, simulations for students. And there's a massive opportunity there to uh, widen that across all disciplines. Uh, and uh, again, encouraging to see that uh, we're, we're keeping up with, um, in fact, in some instances, we're actually leading the way at the University of Adelaide for um, some of those uh, innovations. So, very happy to be here and to see, um, and to get a sense of validation, I think, is a, is a nice way to go.
My name is Rola Jowi, I'm an Associate Professor in Educational Research at the Centre for Research in Assessment and Digital Learning, which is called Cradle, at Deakin University in Melbourne. Uh, I just presented in a session on feedback, some work we're doing, um, it's a realist synthesis of feedback in undergraduate higher education. Realist reviews are a form of uh, theory-driven systematic literature reviews and what we found is that the best fit theory we tested out at three was self-determination theory. It's a psychological theory that says that if you create certain conditions for learning what you do is you drive internal motivation and these conditions are relatedness, um, perceptions of relatedness, so the student feeling like they're connected to someone like their teacher, um, perceptions of competence that they can actually do the task and perceptions of autonomy so they have some choice. And so where we saw the best effects of feedback was interventions that made the student feel connected, like dialogic feedback, having a dialogue with the tutor, for example. Um, audio and video also per, you know, communicated a sense of that there was a real person at the other end. The other types of feedback interventions that really made a difference were scaffolded feedback designs that iterated over time. So nested tasks, reflective activities, things that built those loops and they really made a difference because they emphasised to the student that feedback was for learning. The final thing I want to say is that um, we really noticed a difference between the ways that high achieving students and low achieving students approach feedback. Um, so high achieving students were generally the ones that took up optional tasks and they're also and they're the ones so who took them up and engaged with them and did better as a result. And so that kind of changed my thinking about optional tasks towards maybe more having nested tasks that are compulsory for everyone so that we're lifting everyone up and not just the good students. The other thing is about students who are low achieving already or had a sense of low self-efficacy. When they got negative feedback it really ended up being a spiral with negative emotions that ended up inhibiting learning and the way to break that was the relatedness to feel that someone really cared about you and your learning. Um, they tended to avoid feedback more or it re-established to them that sense that they're a failure. So those are the key things I say when I, I'd say thinking about creating good conditions for engagement with feedback is about building a sense of relatedness, um, building sense of competence and um, autonomy and tackling emotions head on and the way and to do that is to do that through good solid scaffolded feedback design.